This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hey, what's up? I make ground beef tacos pretty often, not only because they're super delicious, Good Lord. but because making those enables me to make one of the most fun pizzas on earth with the leftovers. I'm talking about the in no way Mexican, but very American taco pizza. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make one from scratch at home that's just a pure delight. To get started, I'm gonna need to make some taco meat. I'm making a double batch here, like I always do, so that I can have some meat for tacos and some leftover for pizza. To make it, I'll need to grab my largest saute pan, in this case, a 14 inch nonstick, and I'll drop it down on my stove over medium high heat. In goes two pounds of 90-10 ground beef, then I'll smush that down to get as much of the meat in contact with the hot pan as possible. I'm using leaner beef here and cooking it without oil because too much fat in there will make greasy tacos and even greasier taco pizza. Once the beef is spread out in the pan, I'll hit it with a very generous pinch of salt and then using a spatula with a relatively sharp side like this one, I'm gonna break the beef down into smaller crumbles as it browns. This smashing step is annoying, but very necessary. If we didn't make an effort to crumble the beef down, we'd have dry, large, chunky taco meat that eats like a well-done hamburger. So after five to six minutes of standing here, smushing up this beef, it should be pretty well broken down and taking on some nice brown color like this. Next, I'll add in a small white onion that I've small diced about 150 grams and then five to six cloves of minced garlic, about 15 grams. Now I'll jump back in with the spatula to get things stirred to combine and I'll keep on breaking down this beef along the way. By the way, has anyone tried one of these Teflon meat smashers before? Do they even work? I gotta know. After five to six more minutes of sauteing, the onions and garlic should be translucent and the beef should have taken on some nice deep brown color. So now I'm gonna add in my taco seasonings. That's 25 grams of chili powder, 15 grams of cumin, 10 grams of paprika, two grams of cayenne if you like heat, and then two grams of oregano. I'll come back and stir that to combine and fry this until everything is fragrant and starting to get a little bit toasty. Let's say about 90 seconds or so. Then in goes one can of tomato sauce. That's about 425 grams. Then 400 grams of chicken stock, 10 grams brown sugar, 10 grams cider vinegar and then another strong pinch of salt. I'll stir that in and yes, this is looking very saucy at this point and that's not gonna be good for pizza. So I'm gonna bring this back up to a simmer and cook over low heat for about 15 to 20 minutes or until the liquid is almost 100% reduced. 20 minutes later, as you can see, I've cooked off pretty much all of the excessive liquid here and now we have some beautiful, tender, crumbly looking taco meat. Before I call this done though, I need to check for seasoning. So I'll taste it. I think this needs a little bit more salt, a little bit more brown sugar, and I'll give it a splash of cider vinegar to bring some balance. I'll taste it one more time to confirm greatness and affirmative. That tastes sick. Now, I recommend eating most of this meat in taco form and then saving about a pint's worth or two cups for your future taco pizza party. I'll put the rest of this stuff in the fridge to cool down for now. And while it does, I'll make a taco pizza crust. For that, into the bowl of my food processor, I'll measure 175 grams of all-purpose flour, five grams of baking powder, three grams of instant yeast, three grams of salt, and 50 grams of instant masa flour. If you think about it, a taco pizza should probably have some tortilla flavor in the crust. This masa powder has a really nice nice deep corn flavor, and it's what I always use to make quick flavorful corn tortillas at home. It's pretty widely available in US supermarkets, but if you can't get it, I'd say sub in all purpose flour instead. Lastly, in goes 35 grams of olive oil, then the lid goes on and I'll start to spin this up. While it's spinning, I'll grab 140 grams of warm water and then stream that in slowly through the top to get the dough fully hydrated. If you don't have a food processor, by the way, you could definitely mix this dough by hand. Just stir until it comes together and then knead it like I will in just a second. Once Water is all in. This should only take about another 10 seconds or so for the dough to fully combine like this. This is a weird pizza dough. I'll admit that. The 20% of masa flour here gives it a cakey softness that is unique, but I think is pretty cool. To finish mixing this now, I'm gonna flip it out onto my cutting board and then knead it to develop a little bit more gluten. After two minutes of kneading the dough here, it's gotten strong enough to be stretched into a thin crust pizza. So I'll call it quits and then cut it into two equal sized pieces that are about 200 grams each. From there, I'll grab each dough and fold the ends back behind themselves like this and then flip them over onto those folds and roll the dough into nice little balls. No need to get them super tight here. In fact, if you rolled these up too tight, they wouldn't let us form them in the weird way that we're going to later on. Once both of these balls are rolled up, I'll move them over onto a very little baby sheet tray and then wrap them up with plastic. I'll set these off to the side to rest and rise for 30 minutes while I get my toppings sorted out. For that, I'll grab a high-sided container and another 15 ounce or 425 gram can of tomato sauce. In that goes, then 20 grams tomato paste, 40 grams or two pieces of chipotle chilies in adobo, 10 10 grams chili powder, 2 grams cumin, 1 gram garlic powder, 1 gram onion powder, 1 gram oregano, 15 grams brown sugar, and 5 
grams of salt. Next, my immersion blender goes in and now I'll spin everything up to combine. This is essentially a smash up of enchilada sauce and classic pizza sauce. It's thicker than enchilada sauce though and way more deeply flavored and smoky than basic pizza sauce. After 30 seconds of spinning this up, I've got a nice, smooth, smoky, robust taco sauce for this pizza. If you don't want to make your own, I'd say sub in America's favorite taco sauce, Ortega, and just mix that with some canned pizza sauce. It probably won't be as good, but it'll work. Now, let's talk about the cheeses for this pizza. I've got a one pound block each of mild cheddar and pepper jack cheeses here. Don't go for more aged on the cheddar because it'll dominate the flavor of the pizza and it'll get greasy when you melt it. On the other hand, the pepper jack here is ready to party at any age. What it lacks in flavor, it more than makes up for in creamy meltiness. Very nice. Now I've grated both cheeses on the largest hold sides of my box grater. You could use store-bought pre-shred if that's all you have, but you have less control over the quality of the cheeses there, and I always think that those melt kind of weird. The final toppings to prep out here for this pizza are fresh tomato, a very underrated pizza topper in my opinion. It brings a touch of bright juiciness when used in moderation, and I'm giving these tomatoes a medium dice. I'm also using green onions, or more specifically, I'm using the middle of the green onion. The tops are too tender to be baked hard, and the bottoms are too assertively oniony for this application. So I cut the middle out and then cut it into coins like this. I'll save the tops and bottoms for something else. The last little bit of knife work here is to chop up some pickled jalapenos. I go pretty small on piece size here because I want the spicy brininess to be a part of every bite instead of bringing larger pops every now and then. Once my jalapenos are chopped up, it's time to make a taco pizza. These pizza tortilla balls have been over here rising for about 30 minutes and they're only marginally more proofed up. Remember, we're making a thin crackery crust so gas isn't really a priority here. Next, I'll grab a square of parchment paper and then spray it liberally with pan spray or a little bit of olive oil. Then I'll drop one of my doughs in the middle. I'll top that with another sheet of parchment that I've sprayed. I'll give it a soft press. Then I'll give it a hard press with something to flatten it out. In this case, I'm using a 12 inch pizza tray. This is gonna give us a good dose of downward pressure to get Get things flattened and there we go now we've got a nice flat eight inch round as a starting point i'll cover again with the parchment paper and now with a rolling pin i'm going to roll the dough into a roughly 11 to 12 inch circle after i've got it moved out a few inches from there i'll switch to using the side of the rolling pin to push it out this really helps keep it round and keep it more level if you're wondering hey bry why are we even doing this on parchment paper well it's for two reasons first i think that it's a great way for a beginner to be successful in shaping round flat pizzas Hand tossing pizza takes skill and practice and most people don't get it right. Number two, it'll help us dress this pizza all the way to the edge of the crust without making a huge mess in the oven or getting things stuck to our pizza peel. One more touch on the shaping here is to use something flat to gently shore up the sides a little bit. I'm using a bench scraper, but a butter knife would also do the trick. This helps us make a short little edge around the sides of the pizza that keep the sauce and cheese from overflowing excessively during the bake. Now, once we've got that edge made, the first thing down is gonna be three big dollops of smoky, subtly sweet taco sauce. Like I've been saying, I'm gonna push that out as close to the edge as I can get it. And behind that, I'll drop three big handfuls of mild cheddar and pepper jack blend. I'll push this out to the edge just like I did for the sauce, and then I'll come back and clean up anything that's hanging over. I don't want a bunch of bubbling burnt cheese going on around the edges, but if you like that, make it sloppy with the cheese. Next, it's time to make this taco pizza beefy. For that, I've got two cups of the leftover taco meat that we made earlier. A quick reminder, cook that meat sauce down until it's dry. That way you can get clean crumbles like this that won't make this pizza too wet and overly saucy. Next, I'll add a few strong pinches of sliced black olives. This is a core component of the Tombstone brand frozen taco pizza that I grew up on, and it cannot be left out in my opinion. Behind the olives comes the green onions. Be generous with those and with all of the toppings because a taco pizza is a fully loaded pizza. Then diced tomatoes, about a half cup of those, then chopped jalapenos. Go with as many as you and your butthole are comfortable with here. And there we go. This looks super edible right now before I even bake it. And it's so colorful. I love this thing. Now I'll scoot this parchment onto my pizza peel and then load it into my 550F 290C oven to bake on my pizza steel for six to eight minutes. Cut to the melt shot. Oh, sick. That looks sick. After six minutes or so, I'll come back and remove the parchment paper underneath because this allows any steam that might be trapped under there to sizzle off. And overall, it gives the bottom of the crust one last dose of dry heat to criss it up. As you can see though, the bottom is already looking pretty good. So I'm gonna give this just about one minute right on the steel. 
after about seven ish minutes of total cook time here this pizza is ready to pull oh my gosh look at this thing it looks like a taco bell commercial in here it's fully loaded with toppings like any truly great supreme pizza should be but it's not weighed down by them one of the most delightful and surprising things about this pizza actually is that masa flour in the crust it makes this pizza taste tortilla like without making it too cakey or floppy this pizza is not mexican or italian but instead is purely american and there's no shame in that ground beef on pizza is dope and weird and we should embrace it and do it more often Look, this even looks like a taco when you fold it in half. I hope you try this soon. Let's eat this thing. Before I get out of here, I just want to quickly thank the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Squarespace is a platform that does almost anything you can think of to build your brand and grow your business online. If you need a website, you can do that with Squarespace's website builder. Just use their templates and pre-built layouts to customize the site and build it to fit your brand and style. If you need to blog about food like I do, you can use their super powerful blogging tools to share and aggregate your recipes or food photos or whatever you need to. Here's a blog post for this taco pizza recipe, for example. Another feature that I just found is the Squarespace logo maker. Enter your name, choose an icon, and then preview how it will look on your website or t-shirt. That is very cool. What I like most about Squarespace though is that somebody like me who has no real internet skills can do it without any help. The final product looks pro as hell, and if you do need some help, there's a ton of instructions and tutorials built right into the platform. Right now, Squarespace is offering a two-week trial that lets you play around with as many website layouts as you want, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Lagerstrom to get 10% off your first website or domain. That two-week trial is totally risk-free, by the way, so go nuts. Squarespace.com slash Lagerstrom, you'll get 10% off.